Hi, welcome back to another edition of Insecurity TV. I'm your host, Charles Henson, and today with me from Canada, we have Scott Beck, and in Australia is David Ruddick. So today's topic is going to be dating sites. Are they putting you at risk? How much information are you putting into that profile? Who has access to that profile? Who sees that information? And then are you being a target by putting in too much information on these sites? So we want to first talk a little bit about uh, some recent news about an Australian woman that has lost over $300,000 in a romance scheme that's been going on. Da uh, David, you want to talk a little bit about that and tell us um, a little more about that story and, and kind of what's going on there? Sure. So in early November of this year, 2015, um, a Western Australian woman lost over $300,000 to what they believe was a Nigerian fraudster. Um, apparently, she'd met uh, a guy who uh, had called himself Alan McCarty uh, online on a, a social media app. Um, they'd exchanged messages. Uh, he posted photos and, you know, she bonded with him. And over a period of time, they then started asking her for money to, uh, to help. Um, and what actually they found out when they, when they dug into it is that it, the photo of the guy was obviously real. And it had been stolen from another, another Facebook profile of a guy who um, had uh, been battling cancer. Um, and, uh, you know, in, in the end, um, obviously she lost a lot of money and, and more, probably even more value than the money, even though it's a hell of a lot of money. Um, you know, her heart's broken by the whole thing. So it, it can be very devastating, um, uh, you know, if, if you're not careful. And I mean, the problem is you've got a whole heap of people out there who are single, who are looking for love and, you know, sometimes they'll do anything to find someone um, because being single can be difficult. Um, you know, if, if you're not the most attractive, most social, most outgoing person, then getting out and finding someone for you is, it is a challenge. And uh, um, unfortunately, you know, scammers that have, have worked out that there is a potential angle here and um, are leveraging that and uh, at, at the cost of, of people's money, but more so, more importantly, is the cost of people's um, hearts. So, yeah, absolutely. And you know, if you follow the money, what she was actually where the money went is he kept saying, you know, I need help getting a ticket and I need to get out of the um, out of this country and, and I need to go to Europe, I believe it was. And then uh, from Europe, I can, you know, get over to Australia and, and, and you know, it was just a, a, a little bit of money here and then a little bit of money there. And you know, the, the thing is, and, and there's several red flags, but when you're when you're think that you're falling in love with someone and you feel that somebody's on the other end of the line. One of the things you don't think about is the obvious. Every time she tried to do a video conference with him, he had internet connectivity issues or his computer died or there was always an excuse every single time. Yet she continued to send him money thinking that he was traveling from one location to another and she was helping him fund uh, him ultimately ending up in Australia to come and, and marry her. Scott, what's your take on it? Well, sadly, it's not just in Australia. I mean, these things, uh, they're, they're very targeted. They, they know there's, there's certain demographics uh, out there of people that are more susceptible um, to these kind of scams, and they are specifically targeting. They're finding them on social media. They're finding them in, in classifieds. Uh, and they're, they're actively preying on them. And it's, it's, it's a shame when you hear these stories. Uh, unfortunately, there's more happening than, than we're even aware of because uh, a lot of people that get uh, frauded uh, don't want to report it. They feel embarrassed. They feel terrible that, that, that they fell for it. Um, you know, some, sometimes it's pretty hard to admit that when it's too good to be true that it really is too, big good, too good to be true and that, that, you, that you might have fallen for it. Right. Uh, uh, yeah, and, and when you if you think about it, you know we're talking about a, a money aspect. It, it was a scam, right? But there's so many other things that can happen. Uh, you know, the people put in their profiles. They put in what kind of movies they like, activities they like to do. They put in there that they're a runner. 
that they like swimming, that they, you know, there's so many personal items that you have to fill out on those sites to where you're just giving your full identity away. And it's not dangerous from just a money standpoint, but from a stalking standpoint and, and having somebody actually coming into your life that you don't want in your life and, and preying on you and, and making you victim. Maybe you're a single mother and, and you own your own home. And, uh, you know, I mean, there's, there's different things. And, and these guys are out there just preying on people all the time. Scott, you were going to say? Well, it's almost like pick on Australia week. Sorry, David, but there was a case there as well where, where someone had saw, as you said, uh, she posted her likes about animals and, and this gentleman, and I'm going to use that term loosely because of what ends up happening. Uh, he befriended her, ended up telling her about, oh, there's a job opening at, at the local, uh, I'm going to say SPCA. I can't remember what the animal rescue was. And RSPCA. To, to, you know, to meet and to date and take her for coffee. And he was going to drive her out there so she could apply for the job. And in this case, it was not money. Uh, unfortunately, the, the young lady is deceased. Um, he used this as, as an opportunity to, to actually befriend and, and ultimately ended up murdering her after a, a violent sexual encounter. So when you're online, it's not like the traditional, when you're at a nightclub or you're out with friends, um, Deciding you're going to go meet someone uh, privately without actually knowing them is probably not the smartest endeavor. If you decide that you, you want to use these online dating sites or, or other sites to meet people, great. Do it publicly. Do it somewhere where you can see them and get a chance to, to, to meet with them. Never uh, go meet someone at their house or in a private area. Um, do it publicly. Yeah. 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 Look, I, I, uh, I'll admit that I'm a long time user of uh, online dating sites and, and all the rest of it. Um, I have experienced uh, profiles that were clearly scams. Um, no one's ever asked me for money. Um, and there's also been a few profiles where you weren't really sure, but um, you know, the biggest trick and, and, and I've seen it both from girls that I've gone and had dates with and even just from my own logic, uh, as Scott said, if you're going to meet somewhere, meet somewhere public. You know, a, a cafe with a lot of people in it. Not a cafe that's really quiet down a, a little small alley. Doesn't matter how how niche and trendy and all the rest of it is. Um, you know, make sure the first meeting is, is out in public. There's plenty of um, opportunity for you to get away as well. And, and this sounds very covert and, and all the rest of it. But the bottom line is, you're meeting a complete stranger for the first time. Um, and if it doesn't go well, you want to be able to find an exit strategy. Um, I know, uh, a, you know, typical one for girls and some guys do it as well. Um, have a friend dial in half an hour in, let them know that you're going on a date. Someone that you met from the internet, there's no shame in it. More people do it than you realize these days. It's actually probably the number one, uh, way that people meet these days. Because if you think about it, we live in a world where, um, we, we don't have as many community events anymore, whether it's, you know, being involved with a church or um, some sort of hobbyist group or whatever. Where, you know, you normally meet through friends, work, hobby groups. These days, we're a little bit less connected than we used to be, but we're all so connected through social media. So, you know, how do you go find new people? You go to the internet, you, you go to dating sites and all the rest of it. So tell your girlfriends, tell your, tell your best friends, all the rest of it. I'm going to go meet with someone. This is where we're going to be. I'm meeting them at three o'clock in the afternoon. Can you give me a call at 3.30? And I want you to check in and see how the date's going. And if the date's going well, I'll tell you that it's cool and all the rest of it. The date's not going well. You're going to be my bailout and I'm going to get out of there. Um, and at the same time, there's no harm in turning around in the middle of the date and going, hey, this doesn't work. Um, but yeah, don't, don't, don't go out to their place um, straight away. Don't you know, try and get some verification before you start getting too emotionally committed. If, if someone's making a lot of excuses as to why they can't send a photo, why they can't phone call you, why they can't webcam you or why they can't most importantly meet you in person, something's wrong. Um, and there's plenty of people out there. Just move on to the next one. It might seem, especially when you are lonely and single, that that's not really the easy answer. But the truth is, if you keep looking, you will find eventually. Yeah, absolutely. And David, I think you hit the nail on the head. Uh, emotions. Don't let your emotions get the best of you. Because sometimes we make stupid decisions 
uh, with our emotions get involved. So just, just be mindful of that. And like David said, let a friend know, even if you text them, Hey, here's the, here's what the guy is, you know, who it is, his address that we're meeting at the time, whatever. And that way they can follow up with you. I mean, that, that right there is, is great advice because therefore, uh, somebody else knows where you are. You're not just going it alone. Uh, the, some of the other dangers though is, is putting too much information in your profile. And I've unfortunately read cases where uh, young women are posting, maybe they're a single mom and they're posting pictures of them with their kids just so that the boy that meets them understands that, Hey, I have children and I'm looking for somebody that is going to accept me as well as my children. And, and that's all good and all, but, posting pictures of children on these type of sites, what has ended up happening is women have started dating a guy and she entrusted that guy to take care of her kids maybe while she was at work. And what ends up happening is he's a sexual predator. So as you're getting into a relationship, especially uh, single moms, verify who this person is. Uh, and, and that goes for dads too, before they're left alone with your children. Uh, it, it's just sad how many cases are out there where this type of thing is, is going on. But by putting your information out there on the web for people to find and see and, and know everything about you, uh, you know, they, you put in there that you work out all the time and, and, you know, there's so many things that you can target. You can find where these people work because a lot of times they'll, they'll post pictures of where they work and so on and so forth. So just really safeguard your information, safeguard your data, think twice before you post that stuff to a dating site. Yeah. Scott, any other words, think, thoughts on well, that? Well, and, and be careful what sites you're going to to do this dating. I, I'm aware of there was a, a site that was offering free dating and they would ask you very intimate information so that they could fill out your profile um, because not everybody can afford to go you know, to these paid sites. Um, the, the downside was when people were going in there asking, you know, would you sleep with someone on the first date? Have you done narcotics? What type of drugs have you done? How frequently do you drink? Do you smoke cigarettes? You might think that these are normal for a profile, uh, but when it was done uh, from a security researcher point of view, as you're filling this stuff in, it was actually being sold right, right there through the site. So, um, you may not want to be giving out all that information. Yes, it's nice to have to build a profile, but keep in mind if, if it's a free site, it's free for a reason. Um, they've got to make their money somehow. It is a business. And usually if, if it's free, it's because they're using your information to make their money. So if you're going to go that dating route, I, I would highly advise using one of the reputable ones where, where you pay and, and, and they've got a, a reputation um, and good reviews. Yeah, and go ahead, Dave. Oh, I was just going to say, uh, I, look, I went and saw a dating coach. Um, I'm admitting way too much today's episode. Um, and, uh, and he actually said to me, look, online dating and all those sort of things is, is a great source, um, but go to Meetup um, and, and various things. Find social groups that you can get involved in. Go join a sport um, that you, you will react with, um, you know, your target audience, male, female, whatever, um, go to a couple of meetup groups, start getting out and, and, and re-engaging with community groups and try and meet people that way. Um, and even though, you know, um, you may not end up finding your partner through those community groups, it will actually help with the online dating anyway because you'll become less desperate um, and I'm, I'm being nice about that. Um, but when you are single and, and you don't have anything, you become quite desperate. And then you're less likely to be emotionally um, compromised. Um, so, yeah. So, th yeah, that's meetups. And what meetups is, is they service that you can sign up for. You get an email and you can see maybe you like hiking. Maybe you like running. Maybe you like canoeing. Uh, maybe you're into art. Uh, it can be any type of thing that you're into. You find like-minded people that are all, you know, they join this group. And they say, this is where we're going to meet on this day. And it's, it's a group of people and you can see who's attending and who isn't because you have to RSVP and that meetups is, is a great place to go out and find new people, especially if you're in a new city and you want to meet people and you find people that have the same interest that you have. 
that's not to be confused with an app like Meet Me. Those type of apps are dating apps to where you can install them on your phone and you can find people in your area that have some kind of same interest and likes. That, that type of app, number one, as we talked about in a previous episode, it, it tracks where you are. It knows your location. It wants to know your location so that it can find people that are like-minded and, and have the same activity likes that you do. And it wants you to be able to find those people, but there's dangers in turning that location service on. So you want to make sure that it's only set to be on when you're running the app. And that's the only time. And again, like David said earlier, if you do find somebody on uh, meet me or uh, any of the other dating sites, set up a public meeting somewhere that's very busy. Maybe it's a restaurant, maybe it's for a cup of coffee, whatever it is. Uh, start there before you meet somebody to go out and do a job interview somewhere because of your passion and, uh, and end up a next victim. Yeah, absolutely. We, we touch on it, um, but one of the things I found from my own experience is a lot of the cheaper or free dating sites actually post a lot of fake profiles to get people to sign up. Mm -hmm. So there'll be a lot of um, a lot of very attractive female sites. Uh, you know, you'll do the search for the free search, and you're like, "Oh, there's all these amazing girls on here." You sign up and start paying money. And you're like, "None of these people reply to me. Why don't they reply to me?" Oh, they're fake. Um, Absolutely, it's the Jerry Springer of dating sites. <laughs> Pretty uh, much the same as how we brought his guests on. Always brought on the fakes. Yeah. Well, I mean, they're advertising. They're putting a pretty face on there so that they can get more guys to come to the site and hopefully girls too. It's, it's all just a different version of financial scam. Yeah. yeah. That's, they're, they're just taking across a wider base, smaller yeah. amounts for a wider base. Absolutely. Well, they, they even said Ashley Madison had um, staff who internally were, uh, were trying to, pretending to be uh, potential, you know, um, hookup partners to try and get people to sign up and yeah, it raises the question how many, and you said it brilliantly, Scott, go to the ones that are legitimate sources because if you have to pay for it and it's a good, well-known service, you've got a better chance of getting uh, high quality um, candidates. I, I actually met one of the guys who was the security manager for one of the dating sites here um, and they have very stringent processes for, um, for hunting down fraud, whereas the cheap ones, no. They, they install the app on a web server and the more people they get on it, the better. And yeah. they try to sell advertising and everything else on there to, to, to make money. Yeah. So there, yeah. There is no security in mind. I think the legitimate sites have an end goal of yes, they've got to make some money, but they're actually trying to make connections. I think they're legitimately trying to help while making a buck. The other ones are just making a buck. And if you happen to find, yeah, isn't that great? It's, it's yeah. not the byproduct they're shooting for. Yeah. That's the difference. Thanks, guys. And you've watched another edition of Insecurity TV.